This short video is entitled uh, How to Use the Gospel Parallels and I'm going to give you an example of a pericope that will help you as you look through the materials and also uh, as you end up writing your essays. You will write three essays on this um, section and you will choose three pericopes. I will ask that you do not use pericope 249 because that is the one I'm going to use as an example now. So if you have your gospel parallels I would encourage you to get out uh, the parallel turn to page 199 pericope number 249 entitled The Crucifixion. The first thing that you see when you look at this is that it is found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So using source criticism, the first conclusion that we draw is that Mark is the source and that Matthew and Luke used Mark. When you look at these three, you see that Matthew's version follows Mark's version more closely, whereas Luke adds some materials and takes away more materials. There's a good question that you could ask. If you were reading Mark's Gospel, how does Mark know what Jesus said and did during the crucifixion? Now, focusing on Mark's account, the disciples were scared to death when Jesus was arrested, and they fled. And yet he wants to tell us all of the details about what happened during the crucifixion. Now, according to the Gospel accounts, um, there may have been uh, some women uh, in the distance. And in John's account, um, the disciples are in the distance, or at least Peter is in the distance. But in Mark's account, the disciples have all fled. Certainly, uh, the Romans or the Jewish leaders who helped turn the Jesus, Jesus over to the Romans are not the source of the information about what happens during Jesus' trial, during his uh, crucifixion. If you look at the bottom of the page, 199, you see that Matthew, Mark, and Luke have parallels to Psalm 69, 21, Psalm 22, 18, and Psalm 22, 7. In fact, once again, Mark is using the Hebrew Bible as one of his primary sources. Remember the logic. The Hebrew Bible tells us about the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah, therefore we can use the Hebrew Bible to fill in details about Jesus. So in the book of Psalms, when it says that uh, they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, um, this is a reference uh, to the Hebrew Bible. When they say he divided, they divided his clothes among them and cast lots to decide what each would take, another reference to Psalms. Um, you see that Mark is drawing upon the Psalms for inspiration. Now, when Matthew tells this story, you see that the first part is the same. He only changes a few words here and there. Um, let me read Mark's account. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, and they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it, and they crucified him. Luke is writing to a Gentile audience. He does not include the name Golgotha, probably has no meaning to his audience. He does say that it's a place called the Skull, uh, so he gets the important point across as far as he's concerned. And this reference to the Hebrew Bible about why would they offer him wine mixed with myrrh uh, to a Gentile audience, this uh, relation to the Hebrew Bible probably seems irrelevant at best. If we follow along, um, it says here that the reason um, that Jesus is killed, it was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. This inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews, and with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads, saying, aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself, and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves, and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, 
so that we may see and believe. And those who were crucified with him also taunted him. If you imagine that Jesus was the only Jew executed by the Romans in the first century, then your background knowledge is going to be uh, very unhelpful for interpreting this. In fact, there were thousands of Jews who were executed by the Roman Empire, uh, many of whom were identified as uh, traitors or as revolutionaries. Uh, in fact, what many Jews expected the Messiah to be, someone who would destroy the Roman Empire. Often the Romans would send out a uh, police action on anyone who um, seemed like a threat to the Roman Empire, even though they were small and probably did not pose much of a threat. No threats were tolerated by the Romans. When you read Matthew's account, um, he changes the wording a little bit here, but not very much, and he basically tells the same story. When we look at Luke's account, however, he adds a speech. Then Jesus said, as he is about to be cru uh, crucified, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. I believe Luke inserts this speech in part to emphasize Jesus loving and forgiving his enemies it's not a theme unique to Luke, but it's certainly a theme that Luke is going to emphasize. And here's another way to emphasize it. Even as Jesus is being um, crucified, he is, he is above it all. He is forgiving his enemies. Another very interesting change is that in Matthew and Mark, the people closest to Jesus are also laughing at him and mocking him. Ah, you're the king of the Jews. Uh, save yourself. The Gospel of Luke tells a very different story. And let's read this one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. So he, he tells some of the same story, puts it in a different order. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Uh, Luke you, know, you have to imagine, Jesus is about to die, he's hanging on a cross, and here he is having a conversation, forgiving his enemies. He is perfectly in control. He is telling um, the people next to him, he's offering them consolation um, and inviting uh, one of them who uh, has recognized him as the Messiah uh, to join him in paradise. So. While these accounts are similar, there are also some profound differences.